right, welcome back to the show, everybody. We are live here from the Independent Insurance Agents of Nebraska Convention, and very excited for this conversation. We're actually gonna have a two-part series here with Steve Anderson, and Steve is here uh, to have one of the keynote presentations at the convention, and he has a deep background in the insurance industry, being an advisor to insurance agents, he's written best-selling books, and so we're going to get into a few of the things that he's focused on now in the next couple of episodes, and we're really excited to, to bring them to you. So enjoy the show. Welcome to the Getting Past the Premium Podcast, where we focus on breaking down risk management problems bit by bit until we find a solution. If you would like to discuss anything you hear on GPP with us, please reach out using the links in the description. Enjoy today's episode. All right, well, thanks for coming on, Steve. My pleasure. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, I think Great this worked here. out well for, uh, yeah, you were coming in for the convention. I don't do, and... I don't do a lot of these live, so oh, yeah? it's sort of a new uh, experience. Oh, so that's good. Great. Yeah, that's that's awesome. We we haven't done any virtually, actually, because we've been fortunate to be able to get guests get that are local. in. Our, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we prefer that. I think it's just it's oh, it a is. better conversation. Absolutely. but. Yeah. We're, we're lining some up virtually now. You might be the first guest that actually flown in to do our podcast. <laughs> I flew in to talk to you guys. Uh, I think, I I think yeah, we'll... Uh, That's a good point. We'll, we'll send you a, a plaque. A yeah. <laughs> Does anybody hand those out anymore? Yeah. <laughs> so um, I kind of want to focus. We're going to do this two-part series, and we talked about focusing kind of this first conversation around Catalyst. Mm -hmm. uh, but before we kind of jump into that, I thought it'd be good just to give the listeners your background, your history, kind of the bio of Steve Anderson um, before we kind of jump in. Well, you know, if you're watching on the video, you can tell I have a lot of background now, <laughs> but uh, um, I, I, I will do my best to keep it short. I think the, the important piece here is um, early in my career, I worked in two different independent agencies, one in the Washington, D.C. area, one in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And that's really where I got my kind of first taste of technology. I brought in in that first agency, our first in-house agency management system in about 1982, Whoa. so really early on. And in the second agency, um, part of the and I, I was a producer in that agency as my primary role, but I kept my fingers in operations. And uh, I was involved with a project of moving that agency from paper-based files to digital files. Wow. Right, which today is kind of like, oh, yeah, well, of course. But yeah. well, that was 1994. Wow. When we started that That's process. Crazy. Yeah, so, you know, kind of early adopters of some of the stuff that's commonplace today. Um, and then really found I liked the technology. So um, in uh, 1999, started my own firm, uh, basically doing research, writing, speaking, and consulting focused on independent agents and brokers and their technology needs, helping okay. them you know, find what they need, um, implement it, and get the maximum value out of it. Interesting. Yeah, absolutely. So... Then over the years, that kind of maybe walk through the, the evolution of getting to Catalyst okay. and what Catalyst is. All right. So let me first say what Catalyst is because yeah. that probably will help. So Catalyst is a platform um, that I have co-founded and developed in partnership with seven state big eye associations. And it is – the purpose is – it really is taking what I've done for 25 years and – building it and scaling it. So its purpose is to help agents discover, evaluate, select, and implement the technology they need to continue to thrive. And again, that's a wide range of stuff. In fact, we have, uh, I think right now we have 19 categories of technology, oh, wow. right? Wow. So website, management system, quoting platforms, chatbot, I mean, video, I mean, kind of all the yeah. stuff. Um, and so these seven states came together, uh, invested in Catalyst, uh, pretty significant amount of money, and then um, took my stuff for 25 years, and that's the foundation for it. So it is a uh, membership site for members of state associations that are associated with Catalyst. And um, actually, I can announce for the first time, actually, oh, Nebraska right. 
uh, voted, the board voted yesterday to become part of Catalyst, so all the Nebraska awesome. Big Eye members will have access to information. That's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. 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 I, I love being the show that we can have the first floating <laughs> guest and, uh, and, and announcement. Yeah. yeah. And announcement. Yeah. Um, so, so, the, so that's the background of Catalyst. I would say the evolution is... Uh, about two years ago now, uh, Lisa Lounsbury, who's the CEO of the Big Eye of New York, uh, called me up and um, explained their, um, their thought at the time, which was our members need help with technology and we don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. And so they had a strategic goal. In fact, all the, all the seven partner states all have had strategic goals around helping their members with technology. Explained that vision. They were kind of fits and starts and figuring out, okay, how do we do this? What does it look like? Uh, and she asked that faithful question. You wouldn't be interested in what you would do. <laughs> yeah. And as, we, as I say now, it, it's like, I think I surprised her and me <laughs> yeah. by saying yes. Um, and, and so, uh, so yeah, so uh, we've worked for two years officially. The company launched in March, and we actually launched the platform in mid-October, so just a couple of weeks ago. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. Well, because I think it's super important. I heard you were on a podcast talking about it a couple months ago. I wish I could remember who, but it was just – it made a ton of sense to me because there are so many platforms out there now in the insure tech space, and we were talking on the show before the show, uh, that – you know, these are coming out in a lot of regards to, at first, displace the independent agent. Right. I think we've figured out that that, or they've figured out that. I think difficult. they've figured yeah. out, like, you know, agents are, you know, why are you still here? Yeah, right? yeah. It's like a surprise. We're resilient. Them. Resilient. Oh, I mean, wow. my, my phrase right now is remarkably resilient. Oh, yeah, right? well, that's even better. So. Uh, but And now there's a bunch coming out to support the independent agent channel, but there's a lot of them. Yeah. And so that's what I thought was so awesome about the platform is, you know, we don't, as the agent working with clients every day, a lot of times have the time to do the research and understand right. it. And if we have that partner, Catalyst, yep. that can do that, I think it helps a ton because where I'd like to then take this and get your thoughts is technology, I think, is a phenomenal piece that can, if used right, can help us become and be more of that advisor to our client, be the human element versus... Right. Uh, the efficiency and the transactional piece of the, exactly. of the business, and so I don't know if, if you know you have thoughts around that um, with the, the technology. Oh, I'm sure I have thoughts you, around a whole lot of yeah, things. So yeah, but how um, that, how you're yeah. So I think a couple of things come to mind, and and I think one way to think about Catalyst is large agents or brokers often have a CIO, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe a CTO, some of the very biggest ones. A person whose job is to keep up. Right to be strategically thinking, mm -hmm. what technologies out there that can help improve? You know, a typical Big Eye member doesn't. Right, they're mm -hmm. maybe two to twelve or fifteen employees. They're going and blowing and selling and doing all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know technology is important, but how do I do it? So, Catalyst really is being a virtual CIO for those agencies on a very inexpensive monthly subscription basis. So when a question comes up, a problem comes up, they've got some place to go. Yeah. And they can get not just, um, not just okay, what other agent it might be doing, that could be great information, mm -hmm. but also expert people. We have a team put together that are some of the top minds and thinkers in insurance agency technology. So it's a deeper understanding of the technology and, and what it might be able to do for somebody. And, and I think that discover part, people don't realize how hard it is. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I, my full-time job for 25 years has been discovering. Yeah. Right? And then trying to think, okay, how is this something agents could use? If yeah. so, how? How, how does it fit in? How, and how would it fit into their <laughs> workflow and their normal processes? And frankly, how do you get employees to buy into it? Yeah. Right? Uh, because technology seldom fails. Yeah. Implementation mm -hmm. often fails. Yeah. So on the heels of that, like how, wh where on the curve are we for the common 
independent agent adopting technology? Do you still feel like we're in that infancy stage or do you feel and are you feeling the velocity increase for adoption? Um, so it's not a, a one all for every agent. We we have, uh, and again, at Catalyst, we've talked about this. There is a percentage of agents. We can guess what it is. I'm thinking 20 or 25 percent. I was going to say the 80 20 rule. I mean, that's, yeah. that's, 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 that are already <laughs> retired. They just haven't sold and checked out yeah. yet. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, so yeah. they're not willing to invest. Why should I invest money when I know I'm going to cash out here soon? Right. Yeah. Or I've never done it that way. Or I don't understand. I mean, lots of reasons why. Yeah. That's not our focus. You know, that's fine for, for them. You've got at the other end, so that's why it's not clear. At the other end, you have an interesting trend that I've been tracking for a few years now um, around the, all the M&A, right? Mergers, yeah. acquisitions of agencies. A lot. Latest Future One study, about 38,500 independent agencies. Hasn't changed much, right? Even with all the M&A stuff, which is sort of interesting. Mm -hmm. A little over 14% of those agencies are five years or younger. Wow. Which, Which kind of makes sense. Kind of makes sense. You yeah. get a producer and maybe some staff who have been happy in a smaller environment now get into a big organization yeah. with all the layers of who knows what. Yep. And they go, I don't want to do this. The pressure or, of paying for those multiples that the what, owner well, just Well, and I would for. say, or... They didn't have any ownership, so they didn't get anything. Right. And they're like, what's this? Yeah, yeah. see you, you later. Know, I'm going to build my own yeah. so I can do that at some point in the future. Those typically younger, I don't think exclusively, but I would say typically younger, technology to them is just invisible. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just is. So there's no question that they're going to adopt everything. And I think it's easier today than in my entire multi-decade career to start an agency than it ever has been. Technology's there, market access is there. Um, it, it's just with the hustle we know it does take, but the tools are there and they're less expensive than ever. I would, in general, I would yeah. say my exception <laughs> to that is um, agency management systems, but right. that's a whole other yeah. conversation yeah. that I, 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 we may or not, it's, we don't have time to get into yeah. I would suggest. I've named names. On yeah, the it's <laughs> definitely, a, it be, they're very familiar with uh, who we like and dislike, and you can imagine what column they fall into. Yeah. So <laughs> on the heels of that, I mean, this is an interesting, uh, just an interesting conversation here, because going back to what Elliot was talking about, becoming more of an advisor, the other way that you could frame that is, um, you know, creating value from the relationship perspective and differentiation amongst uh, the rest of the group here. So if it's easier than ever for anyone to go out and start in this business, like how, what are you seeing as the most powerful technology or multiple technologies to differentiate and tell your story as an advisor different than somebody else in the business to enhance that value prop. Because it's like, that's also a threat, right? We're right. breaking down all these barriers to mm -hmm. get into the industry. So we're gonna have everybody come in that sees opportunity. You better be dang good at differentiating yourself and articulating your value to your prospects and clients because there's somebody else that's banging on that door. Yeah, I agree. I think that one aspect to that I would say, though, is the insurance knowledge still is required. Yeah. yeah. Right? And, and that is not somebody just off the street going, oh, hey, I, I mm -hmm. hear I can make more money in insurance. Mm -hmm. You know, building that knowledge base and being that advisor, yeah. right, is, is still important and still really hard. So that said, um, all kinds of things are coming through my brain right mm -hmm. now. When you ask what technology, right. so um, I, I, I would say I think there's several. Um, um, what I would call marketing automation. Um, Ooh, love that topic. And it's you know it's lead gen. All right, mm -hmm. so now I'm going to get into my direct marketing background, yeah. which we didn't even talk about. But love it. Lead gen, right? Be it a Facebook ad, be it a you know a um, 
uh, PDF report giveaway, what, whatever the mechanism is to get somebody to raise their hand mm-hmm. saying, oh, that's really interesting. Uh, I'd like more information. The problem right now with, I would say, 90 plus percent of agencies is they are terrible at follow-up. I call it follow-up failure. So that person raises their hand. I mean, think about, think about it. It, it. Here's an easy one to, I think, put in place. Someone calls you up and wants a quote. Auto quote, home quote. Mm-hmm. This happened to me a couple years ago. Um, my own house decided after multiple years, I'm going to go check, you know, mm-hmm. check out some other options. Uh, purposely picked a nationally based firm that special. I, I have a historic home, so it's not just a homeowner's. Yeah, okay, yeah. so much different. All kinds of details there, but they so specialize. Fifteen percent, fifteen. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> but I went to this company, agency, um, who I thought I wanted to experience their process and I wanted to get a quote. I mean, yeah. I, it, it was partly both. And lo- a short version of a longer story, we went through, they did a great job asking me questions, following up, gave me some proposals, uh, had a conversation, some questions I had about coverages and what about this, what about that. Ultimately decided not to change. They had invested a lot of time in me, mm-hmm. and I've never heard from them again. Yep. Follow-up failure. When I was already prepped, I wasn't quite ready to make that move yet, and nothing. Crickets. Now, I will also say my actual agent in uh, Nashville area uh, who writes it now, and I, I have to say, again, I know enough sometimes to be dangerous, yeah. but <laughs> I picked the agent because of the carrier they represented. Yeah. Right. So I didn't pick the agent and then they found it. I said, that company is the one I want to cover my house. And uh, I've never heard from them in probably 12 years without me initiating <laughs> yeah. wow. a yeah. question, a comment. Oh, I've got some jewelry I need to add. Yeah. Uh, I've heard from the carrier mm-hmm. more than I've heard from the agent. I, I believe that's typical. And the agents are like, oh, no, we don't do that. And I'm kind of like, I'm going to call BS on that. Mm-hmm. You, do you even know what's going on in your office? Yeah. And so having a systematic way, and again, I, I, I want to be clear here, a systematic way to help you engage and build relationships. Yes. This yes. is not taking yeah, you out of the equation. Yep. It's actually you following a checklist and a path that you know works because you've tested it over time. Well, uh, yeah, there's so much to unpack there. <laughs> like, I mean, there's been this migration of, you know, this thought process in the industry where we can't scale a business if we're dealing with monoline homes, right? Like, right. How, how do we become profitable doing that? Right. Um, technology mm-hmm. and relationships. It's a piece and, rela- and relationship because, again, you could... S- Start with that open door, 100%. but are you are you doing anything proactively to build the additional either auto health life right all I mean even I'm a huge advocate of stupid insurance coverages. Now you're looking at me like okay, what, <laughs> what does do you he mean, mean by, by that? Yeah. <laughs> Pet insurance, travel insurance, right? Think of all the and people buy it, uh, but we're not selling it. We don't. Agents you know. aren't selling it. So yeah. true. Right? Why not? That You talk about technology. The agent doesn't have to be involved. They just have to add it as an option onto the relationship there. Oh, by the way, you know, I, I jokingly have said for years that insurance agency employees should go work at McDonald's for a couple of months. Because <laughs> if they can train high school kids to say, do you want fries with that? Yeah. We have something How, to learn. Yeah, what are we missing here? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. So uh, do you feel like you can, <coughs> so getting back to like building relationships and using technology, I love going down the marketing path. <laughs> do you feel like you can automate a certain part of that with marketing to at least get you back to the door, <coughs> right? Because that's what you're talking about. I mean, Absolutely. It, with technology, Nobody would have to be picking up the phone to call you. It'd be nice if they did, but today... <coughs> Actually, today they don't want to call you. They don't want you to call them. Yeah, it could be a lead magnet. Yes. And, and that, so the other one I was thinking about uh, in answer to your question 
is what I call personal video. So not the kind of YouTube answer questions, but literally a webcam on your desktop. Like Loom or... Like Loom yeah. or BombBomb or yep. there are many examples Several. out there. But, you know, forget sending a cold email. Start sending videos that are personalized, yep. right? Again, 2020 changed a whole lot of things and we're haven't even quite seen the implications of all of that yet. But I think one of them is people are more used to being on video and seeing video. And I think that's a huge area of potential for building relationship. Because yep. now you're still looking at them, right? They just happen to be, you know, my, you know, 10 miles or 100 miles or 1,000 miles away. Yeah. And for an agency, that gives them the opportunity to expand their typical Geographic. geographically limited yep. market to something broader. I'm meeting with a client next week that uh, I, we, I was sitting in my basement during COVID. We put on an investing seminar about what was happening in the markets and the economy during COVID. And um, I got a list of who attended mm -hmm. and I shot each one of them a Loom video. Mm -hmm. And you get an email every <clears throat> time somebody watches it so you know that they opened it, you know that they watched it. I'm going to talk with one of those prospects next week. Right. I mean, it's, it is, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, I think to me, it's, it's coming, it's identifying where your value as that agent is. We've talked a lot about the relationship and we talked a ton about it on the show because that's how you become a good advisor is through the, the relationship and use technology though to make the other steps of that process easier. So you mentioned like lead gen marketing, even to current clients. Have that initial reach out be automated or be, you right. know, whatever it is, however you can make that simpler that then allows rather than, you know, you've got 15 employer clients that are renewing this month, instead of going in and typing up an individual email to each one and having to figure all that out, create that first step of the process to be automated or whatever it is, doesn't matter. But just thinking, being intentional about thinking through that versus we've always done it one way, you know, I hate that phrase. Right. But that's how our industry operates yep. in a lot of regards. You know, we feel like our value is in transacting the insurance with the insurance company or that, whatever. <clears throat> that is unfortunately very true. And that's changing with, with technology is allowing us to do that much more efficiently, even putting some of those tools in the hands of the client right. and becoming truly asking about, hey, are, do you have a beloved pet? You know, right, or right. are you concerned about, tra you know, your travel? Or what was your last vet bill? Or, 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 you yeah, know, yeah. Or, yeah. I mean, really any is. of those. And again, those are just touch points. Who knows? You know, probably not a huge percentage. I always say, you're not going to make a huge amount of money on that stuff, but you're also going to solidify the relationship. That's where the I was going more policies. We know this. I, I don't understand why we don't implement it. The more policies you have with a client, the longer they're going to stay with you. Yeah. yeah. And even things outside of those you know, call them, even you call them stupid insurance policies, <laughs> but, uh, well, it gets people's attention non, when yeah, I say that. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> the non-standard, you know, but it, life, you know, health, you mentioned, it's things like that. that I, you know, my two girls got married, gosh, a number of years ago right now. I bought wedding insurance. Yeah. I went online for it. Why? Cause my agent didn't have it mm -hmm. and I didn't want to add it to my home. I mean, again, there are all kinds of those other coverages, even like in the benefits area, there's all kinds of stuff there. Uh, we don't sell benefits. Well, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, and, well it's, it goes back to, I mean, you have to facilitate a relationship in order to get to the point of understanding that. And right. when that hasn't been the business model, it's hard to get to that point. Right. It's, it's hard. It's change management in a whole lot of different areas. Agency mm -hmm. owner, staff. Um, and, and frankly, I mean, kind of back to one of our earlier questions was, you know, makeup of agencies today, a uh, couple things. One is I'm convinced, I don't have any data to back it up yet, but I'm convinced that the average age of an a the agency owner reflects the average age of their staff, which reflects the average age of their customers. Mm -hmm. And so that seems if that agent, I mean, it just intuitively, yeah. I think, makes sense. And if that agency isn't actively going out and recruiting younger, I will say, yeah. right, 
that agency is going to die because their clients are going to die. Yeah. I mean, I, it, without a focus there, and that means a whole different mindset because mm -hmm. my kids expect things way different than I do. Mm -hmm. and, and an agency needs to adapt to that. 100%. Yeah. And, 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 so and okay, here's my plug. Get ready. Yeah. Does technology and fit in there? That's what, <laughs> that's what Catalyst comes in as a strategic advisor to our subscribers to help them with this. Yeah. You know, the change management, the, the what are the options out there? Loom, very inexpensive. Some other ones more expensive. Are they worth it or not? Yeah. I don't know. It depends on your goals and what you want to do. But we can expose our subscribers to a lot of things like what we've talked about that they might not ever see mm -hmm. in their normal day-to-day because -day, they're not paying attention to it. Yeah. So I think we're coming up on time here, but how if somebody listening wanted to learn more about Catalyst, where would they go? How would they? So Catalyst.com, and it's you better spell it. I, I was just going to say. <laughs> um, so just so you know, the 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 name Catalyst comes from Catalyst mm -hmm. for change and IT for technology. Oh, ah. So t changing technology. So it's I got to even I should probably look at it right now. <laughs> um, C A T A L Y I T dot com. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, thank you. That was that was awesome. Yeah, I enjoyed the conversation. We could go on for a while. Oh, I mean, uh, we, yeah, yeah, okay. we do that every time. We could keep going forever. As long hey. as we could get beers about two. You, know I mean? <laughs> you might have to have a speech. Or I beer, might I have to do a little something in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you flying in, Steve. My yeah. pleasure. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, I knew it was an important opportunity for me, so I wanted to take advantage of it. Yeah. Well, yeah, we do appreciate it. Stay tuned, everybody, for our next uh, episode, which will be um, the second one with Steve uh, on the Bezos Letters, his best-selling book. Um, and I think it's going to be a lot of value in that one, too. So see you next time. Thank you for tuning in to Getting Past the Premium. We are excited to continue breaking down barriers and finding solutions together. If you would like to reach out regarding anything you heard in today's episode, Find links and contact info in the description. Until next time, have a great day, and let's continue getting past the premium.